Good morning, Rayfield. It is Thursday. Let's start with our Thursday morning prayer. Remember, every day God takes you by your hand and says, No matter how difficult the path you tread, I will never leave your side. It's another great day at Rayfield and it's Thursday. And of course, we know that today is our day that we participate in our dance class and our exercise classes with Coach Al, Miss Shanna Lee, and our peace work team, Miss Francesca and Mariana, who have been performing our exercise classes for us. We have just finished with a few self-love activities, and now we're going to talk about annually taking care of our teeth, taking care of our pedicure, manicure, all of those things we've talked about, getting a body massage, maybe monthly. We talked about daily, weekly, monthly, and now we're going to talk about those things that we need to do annually to take care of ourselves. There I am getting that pedicure, manicure, massage, all those wonderful pictures, healthy snacks that we've uh, taken a part in, going to the salon and getting your eyes done and your nails done and your feet done. Well, guess what, folks? Annually, there are some very, very serious things that we must do to take care of ourselves. Now, let's talk daily. Our exercise might consist of running, walking, uh, just very simple things. We've talked about people we can trust in our lives, things that we can do to relax. Walking the dog, housework. Although we don't think, or running, we don't think of those things as relaxing, but I do. And then other relaxation is people that I can trust and talk to. I can always talk to a parent, God, a caregiver. I can pray. We've talked about things that we can do to relax our body, like prayer, mediation, good food. Although we don't want to overeat, we're doing our taking care of ourselves and our self-loves. But I'm thinking of the conversation with God, the morning prayer that we have every day. Those small things that we can do to relax our mind and our body. In our annual review that we all do every year, there are so many great things that we would like to include. That just leads me to believe that we're gonna have to do another video on annual review. So during the week, we've talked about uh, what we do daily for our self-care. We've talked about what we do weekly. Now we've talked about what we do monthly and now it's annual. What are those things we do annual? And it's so, so great because once we get started talking about these things, we just want to do so much more. In our annual review, we always start with our health care when it relates to self-care. So we know that annually, everybody in the whole wide world gets a physical, at least annually. We go to our health care practitioner, or our general practitioner, our doctor, and we get our physical. The doctor takes care of our blood pressure, of all of our vitals. Uh, they weigh us. They take a look at our weight in comparison between last year and this year. You might get a mammogram or some type of pap smear to um, just review everything naturally um, and physically. Your dentist might want to do something different in terms of what's happening with your dental care. You might need an implant. You might need a tooth removed. You might need a cavity removed. And they look at that annually. What has taken place with your health during the year and what needs to change for the upcoming year? So an annual review in terms of health care is just a total, total overview of your health. And if you are taking any type of medication, which most everybody is, they take a look to see how those medications have worked 
and if they also may or may not need to change. So moving on from healthcare and self-care, we've talked about self-care, self-care, self-care in terms of loving ourselves. Let's talk a little bit more about the annual review. And I am positive that Miss Joan in the main office is laughing because she does everybody's annual review. And I really should be interviewing her for this part of our video. So that lets me know I'm coming back to the annual review. I like to look at things academically because everybody knows that Dr. Carter is a teacher and she looks at education, education, always education, loving to learn. And every day we learn at Rayfield. So I look academically to see what are we going to improve academically? Some of us might want to improve our handwriting. And remember at Rayfield, we do handwriting every day. We pass out those forms with your name and your personal information on it. And you guys do the handwriting exercises to improve your handwriting. You might want to improve your socialization skills. And many of us have that on our record as a part of our goal, learning how to get along with others as we socialize and as we participate in different activities at Rayfield and in the community. We might want to improve our attendance. Say for example, we only come to school two or three days a week. And you know what? In order for me to improve my handwriting, my socialization skills, some of those other things, I think that I want to go to school just one more day. Maybe I'm only going three days now, maybe I'll go four. Or maybe the days that I'm home, now that we have virtual school, I'll participate in virtual school so that I get that extra added push to help me academically. Then, I also academically want to be more positive. And I mean that in more than one way. My whole outlook about learning, my, own, my whole feeling about learning, how I feel about learning. I want to be more positive about learning. Now that we are virtual and we're doing virtual school and we are learning so many more things in technology, I like that. I like using my phone, my Android, my tablet. I like learning how to go on YouTube and Facebook and TikTok, all those little things that you have learned this year. And I shouldn't say little things, they're great things. It's been great for me to learn those things as well. I am enjoying learning those things academically. Now let's move on a little bit. How about learning or improving annually? our time management, how we use our time. Now, you know me, I am always on a to-do list. Look, right here in front of me, a whole to-do list of things that I'm gonna tell you while we're on this video. I love my to-do list. And what I love more about the to-do list is putting that check mark that says I have accomplished what I set out to accomplish. Time management for me, means that I'm making it through my day and I'm doing those things that are important for the school, for you, for me, and for everyone's learning. Time management. And that's in terms of schedules and checklists. I also put down time management as it relates to health. Now, what am I thinking about there? Drinking our water. And I can always reach right in front of me and find water. What does time management have to do with water? Well, guys, it takes time to drink all of this water. So I even have a reminder on my phone that reminds me every hour, it's time to drink a little bit more water. And that's how you get through your water in a day. It's very, very important. We have people who are in hospitals because they are dehydrated, not drinking enough water. That has a lot to do with time management. Okay, might also wanna add your trips to the bathroom. And I know that sounds kinda silly, but I have to tell you something. When you drink a lot of water and you don't go to the bathroom on time, 
it causes bladder problems. And then later on in life, when you try to get to the bathroom, sometimes you don't make it and you might wet yourself. And although that sounds kind of creepy, sorry I have to mention it, it's time management. Drinking your water and going to the bathroom, time management. Okay, let's move on a little further. Communication. Annually, I would like to improve communication. How do you do that? I'd like to be more clear when I tell you something. When I'm sharing a story or when I'm sharing an activity or an event or even a video, I want it to be clear. I want you to clearly understand what I'm sharing. So therefore, I want to effectively communicate a little bit more. I want to be more direct. I want to share the goal with you of my communication. And I want to share with you in a friendly way. So I want friendly communication. I want full communication. I want potential obstacles and barriers to not be there when I'm communicating. So another annual goal is better communi communication. The opposite of that kind of is listening. I want one of my annual goals to do a better job of listening. When I'm communicating, when I'm sharing, I also want to get the point that the other person is sharing with me. Or if I'm in a seminar or if I'm taking a class or even watching a video like this one, I want to listen more so that I understand what is being shared with me, right? I talked about handwriting. I talked about spelling. I talked about grammar. I talked about listening and communication. For me, that whole piece comes together in terms of listening. That's another goal. Now, you might wanna set some new goals annually. And we all know, let's go back to Ms. Joan in the main office, that when we get our goals, we set a new goal for the upcoming year. It might be that we just add to the goal that we have it might be that we just change it a little bit. We tweak it as we call it. We might want to subtract some things from that goal because we learned it. We mastered whatever that key term was. And I want to add something else in its place. For example, I'm doing such better job in time management with my water, with my drinking, with my this, with my that time management. So I'm going to add something more to that part of my goal. I am going to add, let me see, I want to learn to count money better. So this year, I'm going to add counting my coins and counting my money to my goal. That might be an improvement on my goal as far as I'm concerned. I want that new skill added to my goal. I also want to do a better job of being happy with sharing criticism. I'm trying to say that in a way that doesn't offend anyone. I want to be more open-minded. When someone says to me that I did something wrong, I don't want to immediately be defensive. I want to say, okay, how can I do that better? That's being more open-minded. I want you to get that point because I'm going to come back to it. Maybe not in this video, maybe in the next one, but I'm coming back to being open-minded and receiving criticism in a positive way, receiving positive feedback. All right, and last but not least, my annual summary, annual review, annual improvement has to do with my weight. So I'm going all the way back to the beginning to health. When we think about our new clinic at Rayfield, everybody came into the clinic. I hope you've been there. If you haven't, let's get over there to Miss Kelly. And we weighed in. So one of the first things that we worked on was our weight and our health management. So we weighed ourselves in terms of annually, we want to look at whether or not we gained weight 
this year or lost weight this year. So we can look at our charts in the main office and see how much did I weigh last year? And how much do I weigh now? Have I gained weight or have I lost weight? And of course we are praying that we lost weight or we didn't change at all. Maybe we stayed the same weight. So that's an annual goal that we make sure we maintain a healthy weight. We took our measurements. Uh, we measured our arms, we measured our legs, we measured our stomach. We took our measurements in terms of our feet and we're gonna go into the clinic. We'll do a little bit of videos on that so you can see how that works and what's been going on over there. And we're also going to be receiving our annual certificates. I don't know if you guys remember last year, we have our progress ceremony. So our progress ceremonies are coming up and we're going to receive our annual certificates that go in our progress ceremony envelopes and we're gonna take them home. And so also annually with our certificates, one of the things that we're gonna add at Rayfield this year is that not only are the staff going to do CPR, the students are going to learn how to do CPR. I think it's important that we all know these things. We're also going to talk very, very seriously about HIPAA because it's important. I've had students, staff, everybody say to me, you know, it's not nice when they talk about me. I get it. So therefore, we're all going to train on HIPAA. And for me, that's talking about each other. We want to learn more about that. We're always learning. And last but not least, we're going to do more training in terms of medication. Why? I hear so many times, you guys tell me, I don't want to take medication. I don't want to take a COVID shot. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Well, let's learn why are we doing that? What's important about our medication? How do we make an informed decision about our medication? Last but not least, that's my final comment. How do I make an informed decision about medication? Well, guys, that's my annual review. I went over health, I went over academics, I went over time management, communication, listening, new goals and skills, and my annual clinic review. It's been wonderful. It's a great day at Rayfield. We're learning every day. It is Thursday. It's Thinking Thursday, and we are so happy. We are so excited. One thing that I didn't tell you, we have all staff been COVID tested, and we are COVID free. I am so excited about that. And I am so proud of all of you. We went through the CBS drive through clinic. We all got our results and we are all clear. I am so excited. I'm so proud of every one of you. And let's continue doing the good work here at Rayfield. We are Rayfield strong. Have a great day.